field, we still have a lot of work to do. Yep. After a fossil is removed from the dig site, loaded in the truck, and brought back to the museum, the first stop it has is right here, the fossil prep lab. This is Tyler, our fossil prep lab manager. He oversees all the projects volunteers take on in this lab. Hey Jess and Natalie, what's up? How are the fossils going? Fossils are going awesome. We have exposed all these fossils through our various types of preparation. So when you're prepping a fossil, how does that help you observe more? One of the ways when we're preparing a fossil that helps us observe more about the specimen is we actually get to see all the bones that we have. In the field, we remove just enough rock to get the size and shape of the bones. So we actually have a clear picture of all the bones that we have, and that lets us make inferences about what type of animal we have, how big it is, types of environment based on the rock around, and possibly how the animal died. I observe a lot of really cool nicks and scratches, and you've gone really deep into the rock. How do you prepare a fossil like this? Um, to prepare a fossil like this, we use lots of different tools. We kind of look like a dentist's office with all the tools that we have. We have toothbrushes and dental picks, but all these scratches that you see are made by a miniature jackhammer that we use. So we'll slowly etch all the rock away from the bone. Wow, I also see a lot of different bottles around the outside of the jacket. What's in those? Super glue. All these cracks, all dinosaur bones have cracks in them that we have to repair. So we repair and glue those back together with regular old super glue. That's amazing. So when you're discovering all these really neat details in the fossil, do you have a lot of questions? I have tons of questions. I ask, what animal is this? How big was it? Was it a meteor plant eater? How did it die? What was the environment? You can come up with a hundred different questions. Wow, so do all paleontologists know the answers to all their questions? No, but that's okay. We have several different questions and what we can do is we can make observations to help support inferences that we come up with. And even if we can't answer a question now, we may be able to in the future. Well, so what kind of clues here do you have to help support your inferences? One of the clues that we have here is we have several Tyrannosaur teeth that we found <laughs> in this specimen, which gives us two inferences. One, this animal died and then was scavenged by a tyrannosaur. Or two, this animal was killed by a tyrannosaur and then eaten. So how do you remember all these really neat discoveries and inferences and cool observations? So one of the things that we do is we have an active log of all the discoveries we've made during preparation. And we also compare that to our logs that we kept in the field. So as I'm preparing, I know exactly what to look for. So once your fossil is all prepped and done, what happens to it? Once the fossils are prepped and done, they go up into collections where future generations can observe and research them and come up with new questions. In fact, I have a specimen from this guy right here that's ready to go up. Would you guys like to take it upstairs for me? Yeah, that'd be great. So this is the lower jaw to this specimen that we've prepared. So it's all ready for it to go up to collections where it can be housed and studied. Great, we'll bring this up to Carrie right now. Should we head out? Yeah, let's go. Thanks, Tyler. Bye.